What up, everyone? This is Brenton. And Jenna. This podcast is all about connecting with our autumn family in a fun and different kind of way. So turn down that CB, buckle up, and enjoy the show. It's going to be trucking awesome. Welcome, everybody, back to the Autumn Transport Podcast. My name is Brenton, and I'm hanging out today with my co-host, Jenna. Jenna, what's happening? Not much. How you doing? Just looking forward to Christmas coming up in a few days. Yeah. You absolutely. got big plans? Just hanging out with both sides of the family. Travel? Uh, not much. No. How about you? Uh, no. Just local travel. Yeah. Same thing. Family. Exactly. Yep. It's Minnesota, it's almost Christmas, and there's no snow on the ground, which I actually honestly hate. It just feels so weird to not have like colder temps and snow on the ground. Yeah, I think we have a record warm on Saturday or Sunday. So pretty crazy to see that. A couple of Christmases ago, uh, we got some great guests for you guys today. We're going to introduce them in just a minute here. But a couple of Christmases ago, we had a lot of snow and we had a lot of cold. And I was at my brother's house for Christmas, which is in a town about 45 minutes from where I live, pretty much all interstate. And we had a great Christmas. We loaded up all the gifts into the back of my pickup, drove all the way home through the snow, in the cold, everything like that, got home, and my tailgate was down on my truck. No. All the presents were still there, but I drove the entire way home uh, with the tailgate open. So I think I was so cold I forgot to shut it. So I'm hoping the warmer temperatures this year will help with that. Yeah, Santa would be disappointed in you. He would be bummed. And you have... <laughs> kind of special Christmas for you because it's your your boy's very first one. Well, I mean, he was very little, but it's the first yeah. one he'll be like Able eating to wrapping paper. Yes, and... exactly. He's already started on the tree. All of the bulbs on our tree were nice and evenly spaced, and now they slowly slide up towards the top because he'll pull one off the bottom, and then it, go, it goes back up high, so he can't get it. The tree looks horrible. <laughs> That's my son uh, and his mom are going through the same thing because they have a puppy, and the puppy's mm-hmm. eating everything on the bottom of the tree. Yeah. We kind of wanted to bring you guys a bit of a wrap-up podcast it's c- coming to the end of 2023, and this podcast has been something that we've been doing. We just started it this year in, in March. So we wanted to to wrap one up, and we thought, what a better way to bring the year to a close on the Autumn Transport Podcast than to have our CEO, Julie Andrich, in with us, and our operations manager, operations director. The guy, he'll go by anything. He's one of the most humble guys you're going to meet. His name is Josh Wallen, and uh, he's excited to be here, though. I think, I don't know, Jen, I think he looks nervous. Maybe a little (laughs) <laughs> Bring it on, baby. That's there we Here go. We go. <laughs> well, thank you guys both for being with us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. So I guess we can just kind of jump right in with a very broad question. As you think about the last year, uh, what are some of the things that kind of stand out to you? I know there's there's been some cool things happening with social media. I already mentioned launching this podcast. But are there any memories, Julie or Josh, that jump right out you as something from the last year to really celebrate or remember? Well, uh, you know, going into 2023, um, we didn't know early on what the year was going to be like, right? Coming out of the COVID years, 21, 22, trucking had a boom. Uh, we saw a lot of growth and and honestly, it was a little leery going into 23, not knowing what the post-COVID market and economy was going to do. Uh, but despite that, it's uh, it's been cool to see how our company has grown over the last couple of years. And uh, honestly, 2023 to me was uh, a tougher year, but we all dug deep and got it done. Uh, we had a, a very strong year as a company. Uh, We were still able to grow our fleet size by seven this year. So in a more normalized market under the quotes that of of the situation, yeah, I would say 23 was a fun year. A lot of changes and twists, but deep down, very positive. Yeah, I would agree with that and really agree with the economic uncertainty that we talked about a lot as we prepared our budget for this last year. 
you know, our industry in bulk transportation has been very blessed where I think there's other sectors of transportation that have been more strongly and adversely affected than us. Uh, I think what I'm most proud of as I look back at this last year and and the years prior is how we've just maintained our values through all of that without gouging on pricing, without taking unnecessary advantage of the market and just staying true to ourselves, having some fun along the way too, like Josh said, but just, it, it's been a really great year. Yeah. I, I uh, agree with what you guys are saying there. And Julia, as Josh was talking, actually values came into my head too, thinking about integrity, service, leadership, and family and how when everything is going great, it's easy to lose sight of those things a little bit because I mean, things are easy. No one really needs to step up and, and make any tough calls or, or uh, come up with solutions to problems because things are going great. Everyone's making money. Everybody's happy and you can lose sight of service. Even you start thinking you're real important. Why do I need to serve? I'm, I'm doing great without it. And as Josh, you said with, people kind of coming together and things a little bit tougher. Well, then that family comes in there and that leadership and that service. How can we serve one another? We in the office talk a lot about how can we serve our drivers uh, when things are a little bit more difficult? What things can we do to, to help them stay profitable, help them keep feeling successful? Um, and that family all comes together, especially on this side of, of our industry in the office here, supporting one another. I know pneumatics and tanks have a lot of conversations about what are you guys doing? Where are you finding freight? I've seen uh, Chris Hendricks, our business strategist, working with our hopper team to help them continue to grow and develop and build into some of the new employees that we've added into that division in the last year. I think that's one thing that we can we can talk about here is just some change in the office in the last year. I know we we had a a transition in our logistics division where um, our former leaders in that division aren't here, but we had Katie who was working in hoppers. And I mean, from where I sit across the aisle from her, she's just a rock star. I don't, I don't know if you guys want to speak into that at all, but we've added Katie in logistics. We've added Jake and uh, he's got an associate working with him in, in hoppers now. And it's just really been like the team coming together. Yeah, uh, just to speak about Katie uh, and all the employees here at Autumn, it seems like whenever a situation arises or whenever there's a need, there's so many hands that go up every every, every time. time. You know, it's it's we've got a really awesome team. We're resilient. We're really we're ready to accept any challenge that comes in the door and that speaks to the culture that Autumn has, really. Yeah. Jenna, how have you seen recruiting go in the last year? I know the individual departments, divisions, their uh, managers are working with recruiting about what their needs are, where the drivers would be a good fit, and who to bring on board. So there's a lot of collaboration that's happening there, too. But as you look back on 2023 from a recruiting perspective, what are your thoughts? Always a hurdle every year. Um, and in a positive way, I want to talk about it, of course, because it's it's just really being prepared on being open to what could happen, right? There's always going to be a challenge every single year. Um, I think looking back on this year, like Josh mentioned, we we were successful. And I think it's because we just stuck to our values. We didn't change anything. If anything, we were more upfront um, and really just continued what we were doing that way. It was tough, though. I'm not going to lie. I mean, there's a lot more skepticism out there. Um, you have to work a little bit harder to almost convince people that <laughs> we're the right fit or we're doing the right things here, um, and and rightly so, right, that they have a little bit – some more questions for us. So, yeah, it, it was definitely tough. Um, but, yeah, just one more thing to say that we can overcome and be flexible on, you know. Celebrating that, like Josh, you said, we went plus seven this year. So I think we hit an all-time owner-operator high – in a little bit of a tougher year. What was that number? Uh, we hit 134. That was our all-time high. We hit that uh, two weeks this year. 
hoping to grow that into the 140s here hopefully this next year yeah that's that's awesome and it's not, it seems like we we've seen waves of people coming from other businesses other trucking companies too where uh, as things have been tougher like more and more applicants will come in yeah other divisions too i mean like <clears throat> some of the markets out there have have definitely struggled and so we're getting a lot more um candidate pool from some of those areas that maybe we didn't before, you know? Sure. Yeah. Brenton, I don't want to like steal your job as host and moderator, but I do have another question for Jenna along those same lines. And you own the, the company, Julie, you can cut me <laughs> off whenever you want. I have to raise my hand and ask politely, but you do such a great job at moderating this and you're a great leader. Jenna, with all of you mentioned skepticism when you're trying maybe a little harder to convince or even the reverse, be convinced that that person is a right fit for our organization. Do you find that in tougher times like this, the skepticism comes from people that have been burned outside of our, our autumn bubble and trying to convince them that we are really humbly legitimate, that we're not out to scam them or bait and switch them. Can you speak to that a little bit? Cause yeah. I've heard a lot of that feedback over the years. Like, is this too good to be true? Yeah, exactly. I've heard what I call horror stories from uh, the main thing that I hear from is leases that these drivers are getting themselves into. Right. It's, there's a lot of that, um, the small print and things that, you know, they're, these companies are not in it to make their drivers successful. And so that's where these drivers get burned, like you said. Um, so, yeah, it, it comes from bad experiences for sure, being lied to, and then they get there and it's a completely different story than they were painted. Um, so that is one thing I, I totally understand. But, yeah, it's really hard to convince somebody when when they've got that, you know, post-traumatic stress from their, you know, experience somewhere else. And like I said, with, with our lease um, – purchase program, it has been so successful. Um, a lot of things, pros we have versus cons that other companies offer. And so it's been really cool to be able to lay it on the line, like what ours looks like. And then that usually sells itself too. And one thing I want to pipe in here too, is something I absolutely love about our recruiting department. And I'm not just saying this because I'm sitting across from Jenna, but Jenna and Mark do a great job of under promising and over delivering and that's i would say the motto of our recruiting department yeah at the end of the day if, a, if an owner op is not a good fit for autumn because of family needs home time uh where they live whatever the case might be mark and jenna aren't afraid to tell that driver hey i don't think you're a good fit for us and we don't move forward with somebody and i think that approach to a driver in that situation that hears those words coming from a recruiter on the other end of the phone who's so focused on uh, quotas and numbers and hiring goals and whatever, to hear like, wow, this person really cares about me that much that they're going to tell me what's best for me and that Autumn's not a fit, that speaks volumes. It also is really, it plays a really important role in protecting the culture of Autumn. Um, cause we, we don't want to just get people here to fill trailers. You know, there's companies where you see trailers sitting and the whole goal is just fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them. And it doesn't matter who's in them. And, uh, th what ends up happening then is you bring in a bunch of bad apples, right? People that are going to be negative. They're going to, we know drivers talk. We know you guys talk out there. And when you get somebody who's unhappy, who's negative, who's not a good fit, a square peg that you tried to force into a round hole just to fill it, you know, they're, they're not going to be happy. That negativity is going to spread. And one of the real dangers is that it can spread into unsafe decisions when you're driving. We've started a new thing in the last few months working with our safety department and our recruiting team to make sure that the, the driver, op, the owner operators that come on board with us are going to be safe drivers. You know, that seems to be something that has continued to build and build at Autumn in the past few years is that focus on safety, the importance of hiring right to start with, 
you know, Julie, your dad, he would say your first loss is your cheapest loss, right? So a, a lullism that we all heard. We don't want to bring somebody in to start with that could pose a safety problem. I don't know if we want to say too much more about that, but we should um, recognize that this year at the Minnesota Trucking Association Conference, I believe that was in September, August or September, but Autumn was awarded with three different safety awards from the MTA for the things that we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to be recognized for that. Uh, Josh, you and Chris attended a safety conference in Utah or Idaho? Idaho. In Idaho. Um, actually, one of our podcast guests that came on to talk about sleep, I believe that was around episode number eight or nine, if you guys want to go check it out. It's about why drivers need to get a good night's sleep. But he was a speaker at that safety conference. Any highlights from that conference, Josh, that you haven't had the chance to to share with the world or just the really great learning experience? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, uh, going to um, these conferences that are focused on safety, you have an opportunity to get outside the office and to go get into these workshops and seminars and learn. And at the end of the day, it's very important to get that encouragement from uh industry professionals and leaders that do that for a living that are 100 percent focused on safety rubbing elbows with people that are doing the same thing as you and taking a thing or two that you can learn and try to bring back to your own place thank you yeah and it uh it re-motivates you to do your best every day and to live and breathe those safety principles yeah, we've, no matter the situation. You know, Jenny, you know who that makes me think of, of going to a conference and getting re-motivated and fired up. No. Who does it make you think of? Our pneumatic driver, Chris Thomas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chris, I don't know if you're listening, but you better be. But Chris says that's exactly what happened to Chris. He went to the F3 conference and was rubbing elbows with other drivers, with other leaders in the industry. And the guy's just on fire now. And what I love about Chris is that he's so pro Autumn and the Autumn family. And exactly the opposite of what we said about the bad apples that can spread negativity. Chris is out there spreading positivity about Autumn and who we are and what we do and helping to connect us with, you know, other people in the freight industry. And so uh, thank you, Chris, for being such a great Autumn ambassador. Another guy that is an Autumn Ambassador is Mr. Roy Wallace, who was our driver of the year last year. Super proud of him. Josh, you've worked with Roy. How many trucks has Roy paid off? Is he on his third two. truck? He's paid off two. He's on his second yeah, truck? It's paid for. Okay, so he's driving the, the one that he paid Shout off. out to Roy. He's headed to Hawaii for Christmas. I talked to him this morning, so enjoy your trip, Roy. Oh, yeah. That's, we're has we're anyone, jealous. Have you guys, anybody been to Hawaii? No. Have not? I was in ninth grade. Ninth grade. Nice. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Oh, man. I I actually, that's one of the few places I have been, and Roy's going to love it. It's pretty amazing. Josh, any insight? I, I didn't prep you for this, so if you can't say anything, you can't say anything. But do you have any hints on uh, who might be the driver of the year this year? Uh, why, why not just put it out there? Uh, we, we figured it out, uh, this week. Before you say the name, can you, do you know the criteria off the top of your head? I know most of it. So yeah, what we look for in driver of the year is a longevity of, with the company. We look at, uh, uh, just consistent work history employment with us. And then we look at drivers not having a preventable crash in their tenure with us. Uh, we look at uh, their CSA roadside inspections, making sure all inspections that they've had are clean. And then we get nitty-gritty with... Uh, um, we got referrals, too. Referrals. Yep. And thank you. And we look at uh, their ELD compliance, hours of service violations, uh, timeliness of turning in paperwork, monthly maintenance reports, et cetera. So it's so basically it you're looking you're looking for someone who's been here a while, who gets the job done right, who's reliable, the drive safe, take good care of their equipment, and tell a tell a person or two about Autumn and how great it is. 
basically. And you found one. We found one. And you are one. ready to announce it. Yeah. Uh, this year, for the first time ever, we've never had a liquid tank driver win it, and it is Mr. Charlie Lina. All right. Nice. Oh. Heck yeah. Way to go. Well, Charlie. Very, very well deserving. He hits all of those characteristics as as the manager of his division and a guy who sees what Charlie does and works with Charlie. Great communicator, always on time, very reliable, takes care of his stuff. If he's ever got something wrong, he lets us know about it, finds a way to get it fixed. So that that's cool, man. That's very cool. Well, congrats to Charlie. I Charlie to... was one of my first hires back in spring of 2012. So he's actually been with us for 11 years now. And, uh, yeah, remember the day that he signed on, and he's been top-notch ever since. Did he always have that black Pete that he drives? Yeah, that was the original truck he leased on with. So he he leased on with that truck. Wow, yeah, he's – well, that's cool, man. Thanks for making that big big announcement. Um, Jenna, as you're thinking about guys who have come on this year with us, uh, hired a lot of guys this year, is there – any stories or any a driver or two kind of stick out to you as like the way they came on board was just kind of cool or how they found Autumn? How do most people find Autumn? Uh, mostly seeing us on the road, seeing our equipment, seeing Autumn on a trailer, trucks, nice equipment, right? We get a lot of those call-ins because of that, um, being at the same customers, that kind of stuff. Um, that's the first way to is referrals from our current drivers. Three would be social media is the three ways that they hear about Autumn. Um, Man, that's putting me on the spot. One thing I will say is I can't think of one that stands out, but what the, my favorite part about being a part of the process and being a recruiter and, and being a part of their journey is just that like hearing that I've heard it from, don't want to toot a horn at all, but maybe like 10 guys that I've worked with, uh, drivers that I've worked with um, since being here for about two years and hearing their story of like, you completely changed my life with one Facebook ad. I found my home. I tell all my friends, you know, it's, that is the coolest part. Um, And yeah, when they come to me and say, I feel like I can call you still, even though I've been here for a year and a half, you know, that kind of thing. And being a part and being available to them, that's like my favorite part, the relationship part. So, Well, Julie, yeah. it's got to be neat for you to hear um, as the owner of the company that even in a year that we've hit all-time high for the number of owner-operators that are at least on with us, they're still feeling like they have that family connection because that was something that was so important to this company when your dad started it and it, how you have led that we would maintain that value of family. It's super fun to watch, and I've been sitting here smiling at Josh and Jenna and you just with the enthusiasm that you have and everybody here has for doing it right and being part of a family that is out for the greater good and really, truly wishing for success for our owner-operators. And I've been thinking about the word relationship as we've been talking this morning, and we are not a transactional organization. We are 100% relationship-based in these four walls with our customer base. I mean, we we have some really cool customers, too, that we've built long-time relationships with. Owner-operators like Josh just mentioned, like, Charlie still has that same Pete, and you all know what color it is and what it looks like and his orientation day, like, the relationship is all we have with our owner operators, with our customers and with ourselves. So it's energizing as you guys, especially Jenna, like been here two years, she's got all this enthusiasm, but she speaks like a veteran, right? Like you've been here forever. I will say I hit the jackpot coming here over other trunking companies because even like our platform for collecting applications. They've got all these different tools for multiple recruiters and assigning a recruiter to someone. And and Mark and I are like, we don't need that. We work together. We're collaborative. You know, it's not this like dog eat dog 
Com- I mean, we're competitive for sure, and we're and we're you know we want to be successful, but it's not like that at other places. So I am glad I didn't have to go through that. I started at the top for sure. <laughs> uh, one of the cool things that happened this, um, Jenna, you kind of were spearheading this, but in September, Autumn got named as one of the 2023 top workplaces for women in trucking. Can you talk a little bit about what motivated you to to try to get us involved in that with the company and what that recognition is all about? It was really a little bit of Josh um, kind of just recommending a, a contact with them, maybe as an advertisement um, that we could run there. And then I really just dug into it and and then, ta- you know, talking with Brenton, too. It's like, what can we be involved in? How can we get out there so people know Autumn? And any it's good publicity right get your name out there more things that you can be involved in so that's kind of really where it started um yeah it definitely seems like something super positive to be involved in and we're only going to add more i think piggybacking on that what makes it pretty neat is that we have a bunch of really awesome female drivers in our fleet um one of them uh, katrina which everybody probably knows katrina just such an awesome lady she was one of the Minnesota Trucking Association Drivers of the Month last year. Um, also had Todd Moody, who's in our hopper division. He was recognized as one of those drivers. Josh and Julie, you guys were both at the the dinner to celebrate them. What I mean, Katrina's she's been here. They've both been here for a little bit. Is there things that stand out to them about them in you guys' minds, Josh and Julie? At the end of the day. Katrina and Todd are both great individuals. They're truly awesome partners to have on the Autumn team. I I think uh, just the uniqueness about them, they're so humble, they're caring, uh, they do well, they want to do a good job. Uh, Can't speak enough praise about each of them. They're they're both super willing to help you out whenever there's a need. And yeah, they're just great people. Didn't Katrina start her career as a nurse? Yes, I believe so. And was Autumn her first trucking job? Her second? I, I, well, it couldn't it, have been the first because no. she wouldn't have qualified. Yeah. She says trucking kind of saved her, not her life in a dramatic fashion, but she really did not love her first career, and she loves the independence of running her own business on the road. And she's just so cute and girly in in a guy's world. And this is a world I've lived in my whole life, right? So being at this almost 30 years, and she can maintain her confidence while maintaining her girliness. And I just love that about her. Her hair looked so cute at the (laughs) driver of the year awards. Like awesome. It was really fun to be there and and to see both of them because what happens at that um, evening is all the drivers who have been awarded a driver of the month are there. um, And it's, there's a dinner and then a bit of a presentation, but it's a dress up thing. And, you know, Todd, as long as Todd has been at Autumn, everyone has known Todd for his overalls. Mm -hmm. He's always wearing his overalls. And, you know, Katrina, she puts a lot of pictures online, but it's usually with her truck and she's in work clothes, things you would expect her to be wearing, doing the things that she's doing. And then to have both of them there all dressed up and fancy and uh, looking about as comfortable as Josh was walking into the podcast room today. Um (laughs) You know, just a little out of their element. But they, they just like Josh, handled it like pros. And it was just a wonderful night to see them and to see them recognized, not just by us. Because, you know, as a dispatcher, you tell you're doing a great job. We appreciate having you on the team. But to go up there in front of a bunch of your peers, other drivers in that room, there were other companies in that room, just a lot of people there. And they do a nice little video. Um I don't, you didn't, did you narrate this year's or two years ago? It was two years ago. Two years ago. But, you know, we submit some information as a company for them about them. And then they, it's a nice little video about them and they walk up on stage and, and receive their award and just really cool thing. You know, earlier Julie said she was sitting here smiling and, and now I just talked about walking up on stage and receiving an award. So I think Julie's about to stop smiling (laughs) 
when I say this, but in May, um, the four of us actually were at another celebratory dinner, luncheon, a little bit dressed up. And Julie was recognized as a top woman in business by the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal. Julie, you are not comfortable that day either. Tell us about that experience. I would have rather worn Todd Moody's bibs to that <laughs> luncheon than the beautiful outfit that my sister picked out for me because I was so out of my comfort zone. And honestly, Todd, if you're listening, I'm sincere. I would have rather worn your bibs and felt more comfortable <laughs> there. I think there were 1,500 people at that lunch. It was downtown Minneapolis. And uh, the King, part of the people at King also attended that uh, luncheon as well. Uh, what an honor to be recognized in a community of your peers. Yeah, so it really was your name was submitted by some folks at King, and then they collected some background information. But um, it's an honor well deserved. So Thank you. we really appreciate you as as our CEO and the way that you lead us. And uh, yeah, what I want to know is where's that plaque? I don't know. Actually, I don't know where I have it. I didn't get the base for it when I picked it up that day. So I think it's in my drawer. I also am not a like showy person that way either. Like I'd rather yeah. have family pictures or picture of my dog on my desk than an award. I don't know. I'm probably weird like that. Well, we all thought that you definitely deserved it. Thank you. I was proud to rec represent transportation. I was the only woman in yeah. transportation there. So tried to give a shout out in my 30 second speech to 1500 people while I was sweating <laughs> profusely and trying to stay standing that, uh, Remind people that anything that you wear, you see, you touch, you eat, you sit on, all came by truck at some point. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a really cool message that you had, I thought. One thing I know we've been talking about having these lunches and dinners together. And then um, I, I know one thing you can tell um, from our socials is our love for food. And, and one thing I do want to mention um, that... I know Brenton will love that we talk about. And a lot of times I got to set this up, but Brenton writes a lot of our social media. And even when it's his birthday or his anniversary, sometimes he'll write his own post and that's fine. He does it all. What? And I'm just saying, no, I have a point. I promise. It's better so be a good I, one letting that cat out of the bag. I want to bring up the lunch and learns because Brenton actually started these and I don't want you have to toot your own horn on this one. I'm going to take no. a step up to the plate and say, <laughs> I'll talk about it for you because I thought it was really cool. So we started these lunch and learns. Brenton started these lunch and learns in the summer. And, um, you know, we had a little lunch. And I thought they were pretty cool because it really maybe showed all of us that it's cool to invest back into how we feel, learn about the workplace. It's not something that comes easily to a lot of people. So I guess I just wanted to ask, you know, what you took away from that. And I guess are we doing it again next summer? I'm sure. <laughs> Brenton, are we doing it? We definitely are doing it again <laughs> next summer. Yeah. I, I thought it was a great time. We had amazing. It wasn't anything mandatory. Um, we did offer lunch. So, you know, people show up when there's food. But everyone stayed. They What, what happened basically is we watched a video on YouTube about a 20-minute talk um, about a topic usually around self-development. So... Uh, one of them was about taking extreme ownership for the things that happen in your life. One of them was about understanding like emotions and how we pass our emotions to other people or how our emotions are, um, how we receive other people's emotions onto us and how to be aware of that. And then the third one, which actually was the first one we did, was about being a great team player, how to be a great teammate, um, things that you can do to be humble, to be hungry, and to be smart. And we had some good discussion around it afterwards. Um, you know, those were the three that we did. Josh or Julie, did you have a favorite? I had a favorite, although they were all very good. Um, I really liked the You Are Contagious one about emotions and, and being positive because there's just so many negatives going around in culture and the world and just 
today in general that if you harp on negativity, you're going to have a really miserable life. And the cool thing about if you can um, put out positivity, how many people will be impacted by that and look at you differently and maybe be encouraged themselves to produce positivity. But uh, if Tim, our CFO, were here, he would tell you that there's only two things in life that you can control, and that's your attitude and your effort. And I just had that ringing through my mind that whole po- or that whole lunch and learned that, hey, we're here to do a job, yes, but if we can uh, promote positivity, we're going to all be happier in our workplace. We're all going to be on the bus rowing, paddling, whatever to get the job done. So I was encouraged by that one, especially just for uh, the positive approach. Nice. I had seen the uh, ultimate team player before at a leadership summit with uh, the global leadership summit that uh, my church hosts, but that is not an old message. I mean, that rings true year in, year out about humble, hungry, smart when Josh was just talking about like you're contagious and what you're putting into people, is it positive? My sister and I used to get so embarrassed when we were kids because my dad would go up, like we'd go grocery shopping after church and he'd look at the cashier because this was way before self-checkout. He'd look at the cashier and say, well, how are you today, Jenna? Did you know that you're never fully dressed without a smile? (laughs) <laughs> and my sister and I would like slither under like, oh my gosh, dad, that's so embarrassing. He got more positive looks back, words back at him for seeing somebody, not just the transaction, right? Mm-hmm. You can scan all your groceries all you want, but to see somebody, look them in the eye, call them by their name, um, was good. And that made me think of that in the You're Contagious video. I think that's one of the real, the real sad parts about how things went during the COVID time and with everyone throwing on masks and staying inside and be, being so afraid of each other. And yeah, now we can go out again. And most people, you know, most of the sane people are no longer wearing their masks around. But I think there still is that lingering effect of not talking to people, not interacting, just walking past each other and um, not doing the kinds of things that your dad would do. Um, I I tell my drivers when I can, um, but being positive is so important as a driver. And it's just undeniable that the guys who are positive are more successful. It, I can't think of anybody that has come through Autumn in my time that was ultra successful and ultra negative, ultra pain in the butt to everyone and everywhere they met. Those guys, they don't last around here. That's not our culture. Um, so if you're if you are super negative, uh, you're probably not going to be happy here. You're not you're not happy anywhere, but you're definitely not going to be happy here. Um, and you're, you're going into customers, you're interacting with guys that are, you know, sitting at a security gate, checking trucks in and out. They're maybe not going to be your best conversation of the day. Like maybe kind of expect that, but flip the script. Um, you go in, you're going to get loaded. There's a problem. There's a delay. No one's out there trying to ruin your day. You know, be positive, be patient, be encouraging, be helpful. The guy's... I mean, the guys that work in liquid tanks that are positive and that they're like that, they just, they, they're they more successful. I mean, Josh, you've watched a lot of guys come in, you know, hire on and either succeed or leave. And, and Julie, you too. I mean, you guys, can you back me up on this? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that, yeah, simple as that. that. Simple as that. Is that something that you look for, Jenna, when you're when you are recruiting? Is is the negative guy? That's a big red flag from the onset, I would think. Yeah, I mean, this whole the whole process of leasing on and and working is all about attitude. I hear it from safety all the time. I'm gonna I'm gonna call and just kind of gauge the attitude. Where's that at? But my first interactions on the phone, I don't get to see you. 
it, all we have is our tone of voice and our attitude towards each other. So, of course, it's going to be my first kind of bit of how I get to know you. That was actually in that Contagious video that we watched this summer. They did a psychological experiment just using phones and listen to a voice and ask people that, right. does that person make you feel happy or, or sad just by the sound of their voice? Yeah, and I, I, um, I studied psychology in college, and one of the things is you can hear a smile, and you really can. So it's, it goes both ways, you know. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of really cool things happened this summer. I guess one more that I wanted to hit on, um, Josh and Julie, you guys weren't necessarily involved, but you were kind of supporting this effort. We launched a new website this year, and Jenna brought a lot of energy to that project. It was something that had been on my list of to-dos for probably a couple years, um, was involved with the previous iteration of our website, and thought it was time to, to update. But Jenna, you kind of brought the energy behind that. What do you love most about our new website? Um, I love, we were able to update um, a lot of the graphics and, and, and make it really come together with the pictures and the orange truck, you know, and we've got really cool testimonies on there from current drivers too, where we have, you know, just a sentence or two about their experience with autumn and it, I guess just that personalization of it has been really fun. Um, I do love uh, the creativity we got to have. That was so fun. You, you, you know, there's probably a lot of recruiting jobs and dispatch jobs where they don't get to have that outlet <laughs> at all. So we got to do that, which is super fun. Um, that drone video on the front, I think, is that was one of my favorite yeah. part of it. I mean, yeah. that's so cool. It catches your attention and it's trendy. And so we we saw that across other websites and just thought we needed to do that. So. And we had yeah. such great driver participation. Yeah. Guys volunteering to bring their trucks here. They got them all washed up and cleaned up for it. And yeah, couldn't have done it without. Some of the driver car. picks on there that we put together, like drivers were into posing and doing all kinds of weird yeah. stuff for that. Yeah, it's been a recruiting tool too. I mean, we've had, you know, obviously people check out the website when they're researching a new company. And um, we've had a few actually... Uh, mentioned to me, hey, I saw my buddy on there. I used to work with that, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's, I don't know, kind of random when that happens, but it has happened. So that has been, yeah. that was, that was a fun project to be a part of. And I think we have a, a product to be proud of that rivals any other trucking company website out there uh, in our size class, especially. Yeah. I'd say we're probably even above and beyond the websites and the technology of a lot of other companies in our same size class. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, Julie, for, supporting that project you know i was fond of the old website for nostalgic reasons and i don't want to say i had a hard time letting it go because when i saw the new one come out and that drone footage and the testimonials and it we look so hip <laughs> <laughs> so i did let the nostalgia go and i don't think that it takes away from our feeling like a smaller company, even though we're a bigger company than we were at maybe at the old iteration of the, of the old website. So no, I, I really like it. I think it is really neat how someone could go to our website and maybe get the impression that, wow, are these guys like a four or 500 truck company just because of the, how professional and polished we tried to make that look. We'll and then there. they, they what, sorry, what? we'll get there. Yeah. Well, then they get the, the, the flip though. Right. So then they, well, I'm going to call them anyways. And they're intrigued and they call and then they're like, oh man, this recruiter, like talked to me like I'm a human. They really care about me. Mm -hmm. I talked to one of the dispatchers and he seems really honest about what the freight is and where things are at. And I talked to Josh and he's helping me to find this truck that, that is a good fit for me. And, um, so they get that personal touch, you know, kind of that professional appearance on the on the front end and then that personal touch on the back side to find out who Autumn really is. Speaking of Josh helped me find a truck, I feel like quite a few guys this year were able to pay off their leases and, and own their truck. Yeah, I think we had a record year. We had 17 owner ops pay off their trucks this year. Wow. Super exciting. That yeah. is super cool. Yeah, we're on pace to have another 12 payoff next year. So it's it's super cool. And Jenna was talking about it earlier about uh, the recruitment of, of 
lease purchase operators and a lot of drivers have seen just horror stories out there with uh with what other companies how they set them up and Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's really cool we've got just a a shout out to our lease purchase program we've got two ways of doing it a money down option where if you're willing to put some money down we give you the criteria and reins to go pick and choose a truck you want to be in working with local dealers around your house and if we can find one we'll buy it for you and schedule orientation immediately and get you up here to start with us so that's super awesome and i don't think a lot of lease purchase programs have an option like that that gives a driver the reins and the opportunity to hey i saw this truck i want to be in this truck let's get this and go trucking that's pretty cool but also too we've got trucks sitting on a pretty regular basis that we can get you in the door quick and and get you into something like that but it's it's been fun uh seeing how the, our lease purchase programs evolved over the years and and talking about Katrina and Todd earlier Katrina's on her second truck Todd's on his second or third I believe third truck now so even after guys pay off and and uh there's still options we can start a second lease we can start a third lease whatever the case might be well, we'll do just about anything to help a, a good owner operator succeed and to keep them around here. I think that that's all worth it. As as we kind of wrap up a little bit here uh, on 2023, you you open the door to 2024 by saying there's you know looking to be about 12 owner operators paying off trucks next year. I'll, I'll ask you first, Julie, from from where you sit. Um, as, as our CEO, what sorts of feelings or thoughts or visions do you have for 2024? So I, I think a lot of what we're forecasting and thinking about for 2024 from a financial and economic standpoint, especially after going through uh, everything since COVID, since 2020, we had a good growth spurt between 2020 and 2023 each year, year over year. I think it might be time to just rest on the growth and wait and see what happens. We've got an election coming. Autumn has always, my parents have been so fiscally responsible. They've run the company so responsibly where they're not spending every dollar they make. They reinvest every dollar that they've made and any savings that we've had over the years goes into reinvesting in the business, which is why we were able to buy additional trailers, additional trucks. Trucks didn't get cheaper since 2020 either, and trying to make responsible decisions that way. I think in 2024, I'm not going to say that we're not going to grow, but I don't know that we should expect to grow at the pace that we have over the last three years. We will always, and this has been since 1980, we will always grow when the customer requires it. If we've got a long-term relationship with any customer that has a new need, a growth need, they may want to put more of their eggs in Autumn's basket. We will analyze that opportunity and grow with the customer. So I'm not going to say that there's no growth, but I don't have a real aggressive growth plan for 2024. And that's okay. As I talk with the, at least the liquid tank guys, one of the things that I've been trying to say as I think about 2024 and where things are at and where things are going is I think that um, our customers are going to be looking to go back to the people that they can count on and they can trust. Um, people that have been there for the long term. There was a lot of people that came into the at least the liquid market who you know, rates were super high, so everybody thought it would be a great time to buy a tank and go make a bunch of money. And what happened is there got to be a bunch of tanks in the market, and then the the people who control the freight started to say, hey, you guys were charging crazy amounts before. It's time to come back down to earth a little bit. And I think some of those people who got in are going to get back out, and then the customers are going to be looking for who can we count on? Who's always been here? Who can we trust? I think there'll be opportunities also 
based on what you just said, people that entered the market at a high rate and didn't have any savings, they can't withstand whether it's cash flow or other economic factors, there will be an opportunity. And I was reading this on Freight Waves uh, and Craig Fuller on Twitter too. I think there'll be a lot of opportunity for buying equipment less than what we've been paying over the last few years. I just don't know if that'll be in 2024 or 25. We have with Josh and Chris Hendricks, Chris is in charge of buying and trading all of our trailer and that sort of equipment and Josh buying the trucks. We've paid top dollar over the last three years for some. We've been responsible and not paid top dollar for others. And I think that there will be a fallout and that's kind of being predicted by economists smarter than me to, we need to watch for that. And I think that's where additional opportunity comes for autumn. So when I say that we're not planning on an aggressive growth plan, we are in such good shape financially to strike at an opportunity if it if it comes, and we've got a moderate growth plan ahead. Echoing, yeah, everything that you said. The good news is trucking isn't going anywhere in 2024. We'll all still be coming in on a daily basis, doing our job, getting getting it done. So uh, I'm positive about 24 as well. Uh, it is going to be an election year. Who knows what challenges will come with that and or what opportunities will be presented with. But the good news is Autumn's been doing this since 1980, and we're going to continue to do it in 24, 25, and well beyond that. So, I think a good thing to remember is that as a driver, you are the face of Autumn to those customers. And part of the reason why they call Autumn back. And so if you um, work with your dispatcher to set an appropriate plan and then you arrive on time and you arrive with a smile and a clean truck and trailer, as clean as possible with some of the places we have to go, but you deliver with positivity and, and you leave and leave that positive impression, that's when Autumn's going to get a call back again. Um, and when freight is tight in air quotes, if you're if we're not performing, if we're showing up negatively, if we're showing up late, our dispatch team has a job to do with our customers. This is not all on drivers. We're partners and a team, but we both have to be presenting Autumn as the number one go-to option. And so far, I think we've been doing a great job of that, and I look forward to 2024 doing the same thing. Jenna, 2024, from a recruiting perspective, what's it look like for you guys? Oh, wow. Um, hire, 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 make a bunch of racket in the office and then get back we to are hiring. Loud. We are loud, um, but our job is being on the phone, so <laughs> I'm not going to apologize. Um, yeah, super excited uh, to just keep learning. I, um, like I said before, just trying to anticipate and see what we can come up with to be creative, um, to keep, keep it flowing. Um, I really appreciate what we do here with the podcast because like I said, it's totally a recruiting tool and kind of puts a face to our name almost as a recruiter, right? I a lot of people have seen me or heard me and then get to talk to me and it's, I don't know, pretty a pretty cool experience. So I definitely appreciate um that. So just keeping my eye out for new ways to be innovative and competitive and kick some booty. That sounds great. Josh and Julie Thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to sit in with us. Josh, man, you climbed a big emotional mountain and made it in here today. So proud of you. Thanks for the words of affirmation. I you're appreciate welcome. it. Buddy. I mean, you're, you, you've you got two years on me at Autumn, but I got years on you and life. And uh, you just did such a great job being here today, man. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> Julie, thank you for taking the time also. Thanks for doing this. All right. Well, well, and You're welcome. Jenna, thank you too. <laughs> I want to thank all of you guys for listening today to the Autumn Transport Podcast. Hopefully you learned a little something about our company, what happened in the last year and where we see things headed in the upcoming year. So really want to thank all you drivers for a great 2023. There were ups and downs and there were challenges, but you guys are the backbone of what we do. 
our trailers don't make any money if they sit there not attached to a truck. So we rely on you. We appreciate you. And so we head into this Christmas time. We're thankful for all of you. We want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and a blessed 2024. Take care. And happy birthday on New Year's Day, host Brenton. Happy birthday.